On today's episode of Wangle's Workshop, I'm going to be making a dagger for the 2022 YouTuber Dagger Challenge. If you're unfamiliar with what this is, basically 20 YouTubers got together for a friendly competition where we're all going to build a dagger, and then the viewers will get to decide who made the best dagger. So in the description of my video, I'll have a link to all the other channels and their dagger videos, so you can go watch those, maybe find some new awesome channels and content, and then you can decide and go to the voting survey, which will also be in the description, and vote who made the best dagger. For my dagger, I started with quarter inch 1084 high carbon steel. So I've heated it up and I've hammered it to shape. Now I'm going to go ahead and hammer the bevels in. After that, I'm going to stop. I'm not going to hammer out the tang. I would like to do that, but it's just a little bit too much work and my elbow can't quite handle that uh, with the quarter inch steel. So I'm going to go ahead and grind that and cut that to shape and then uh, we'll get going. Now I'm going to trace the template onto the steel, at least half of it. Um, and the reason I say half is because once you do one side of it, you pretty much have to stop and trace that side out and copy it over to the other side. That way you have perfect symmetry. Here I'm surface grinding both sides of the knife, focusing on the ricasso and the tang. That way I can mark out the tang a little easier and I can set it on a flat surface. Now we're going to do what I was talking about, which is copy the one side that's profiled onto the other side of the knife, creating perfect symmetry. Well, relatively. New tool to the shop that is long overdue. It is a file guide. I guess this one is the Nordic Edge. I think I ordered it from Pops Knife Supply. Um, and what this does is it has these carbide pieces on top that are harder than the files. So as you file up to them, they prevent you from filing past and allow you to create even shoulders and you know plunge lines and that type of thing. One little tip when you're doing this type of stuff is to sand off one of the file edges so that one edge won't cut as you go up to you know specific surfaces. It's pretty convenient. So here's the dagger. I've clearly surface grounded a lot further. You can see some of the uh, bevels are forged in. That's fine. It'll make it you know less grinding work. And now I'll go ahead and coat the edges with layout fluid and use a drill bit to mark out the bevel lines. Essentially, you're marking where to grind to the apex of the bevels. So now I'm going to go ahead and grind in my preheat treatment bevels. Um, I'll start with an aggressive angle and I will grind up to that apex line that we marked out. And then I'll slowly pull the lines towards the center of the blade. And in this instance, I'm using a work rest method where I just rest the blade on the work rest and drag it across. It makes a uh, Grinding bevel is pretty simple. For the guard, I'll be using a piece of 3 8 inch brass.
To connect the holes, I will put the bit in a regular drill. I will clamp the piece vertical and then I'll just slowly apply downward pressure, not too much obviously to put pressure on the bit, but enough to slowly work your way and connect the holes. And for the fine tuning, I will be using files. For the handle, I'll be using a piece of dyed and stabilized burl from Phoenix Knife Handles. And this will be a similar process to how I fit up the guard. I will drill the holes and then use a regular drill with a drill bit to connect the holes together. And in this instance, I will use a drill bit that's a bit thicker than the tang. It doesn't have to be quite perfect and it'll make it a lot easier to get it fit up. So here we are with the tang all fit up. Now I need to go ahead and drill the pinhole in the tang. And so in this instance, I will drill through the handle material, make a mark in the tang, and then I will drill through the tang separately. And then I will put the handle material back on and drill all the way through it. This prevents the drill bit from bending and creating a wider hole in your handle material. Now for the heat treatment, I'm going to go ahead and anneal the blade a couple times, and then I'm going to apply some hamoning clay that I got from Pops Knife Supply. I believe to dry the hamoning clay, I had to put it in the oven at 300 degrees for 10 minutes. And then I will go ahead and heat treat the knife. I'm going to heat it up to non-magnetic and quench it in Parks 50. People, please make sure that you have a working fire extinguisher in your garage. You never know when instances like this might pop up, and this one was no big deal, but you never know when it could be. Um, also, make sure you're wearing your PPE. I'm wearing a respirator. I have heat-resistant gloves on, and this all just, you know, make sure that we're doing things safely. Now I'll go ahead and check the knife with a file, make sure it hardened correctly, and then I will put it in the oven for two tempering cycles, and here it is after the temper. Now I'm going to go ahead and finish grinding the bevels. At this point, because the heat treatment is done, you need to make sure that you do not allow the knife to overheat, otherwise you will mess your temper up. Once I finished grinding the bevels, I hand sanded the knife up to a thousand grit. Now I will acid etch the knife and then I'm going to polish out the hamon. Now I'm going to use a 1500 grit polishing compound mixed with some 3-in-1 oil and I will use a cotton makeup pad to polish the blade.
Now I'm going to shrink the guard down closer to the size I need it to be. And this is because once I do the glue up, I don't want to have to do a ton of grinding on the brass, which could cause it to overheat and mess the epoxy up. Now I'll go ahead and glue the guard and handle onto the knife using some JV Weld epoxy and some black dye. Now here's the finished product. I'll go ahead and snip the pins off and start shaping the handle. For the shape of the handle, I decided on a round design, but it's actually going to incorporate um, some bevels and angles essentially. Um, and basically the seam from the center of the blade is gonna continue straight down the guard and all the way down the center of the handle. Coming up to the guard, I will use a multi-tool to clean that up. And then for the bottom of the handle, I wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna go about doing it but I ground it at a really high angle. And what this actually ended up doing um, with the other angles is creating a teardrop shape. And I just went ahead and went with that and tried to bring it out. So now I'll use a file to help finish cleaning up all the lines and then I will hand sand the handle from 220 grit up through I think 800. For the finish, I'll apply some boiled linseed oil, and then once that dries, I will buff the handle out. And now, last thing, I need to sharpen the knife. I will start with a 80 grit belt on the belt grinder and notice I you could either put your belt sander in reverse or you could uh, sharpen the knife in the opposing direction and I'll start with an 80 grit and I'll create an even bevel all the way down both edges and both sides until I have an even burr and then I'll make my way up to 400 grit and finish on a leather belt. If you made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking around. Don't forget that this dagger is, was made for the YouTubers 2022 Dagger Challenge. And the link to the voting survey will be in the description of the video. Please make sure you go watch all the other competitors' videos. And then go vote and decide, you know, whose dagger you like the best. But, you know, definitely vote for me. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. And if you want to be notified when I upload new videos, make sure you hit that notification bell. You could also go follow me on Instagram. I kind of post more frequently there and you can kind of see behind the scenes a bit more. And as always, thanks for watching.